This is John Riolo. Welcome to our Civil Discourse blog. You know, they say you have to have faith. But it took someone with the courage and stature of General Colin Powell to really you know, say what's on, been on the minds of many of us. He said, despite the fact that Barack Obama is a Christian, what if he were not? Many people have been raising this issue about claiming that he might be a Muslim. But what if he were? Does that really disqualify him from becoming president of the United States? Does the fact that somebody belongs to any religion or no religion, is that criteria for them being president or holding any particular office? You know, we supposedly live in a country where anyone who meets the basic constitutional qualifications can rise to that high office. Where does it say that one has to be a member of a particular religion? Many of our founding fathers, including Thomas Jefferson, did not hold to any particular religion or faith. These days, almost every candidate for public office it has to prove that they are a person of faith, and not only that, they have to profess their faith publicly at almost every political appearance. It's not enough to have faith, but you have to advertise it. You have to wear it on your sleeve. But you know, if it's so important that a president have a particular faith, what about other important people you know, that we interact with? Should we expect that our lawyer be of a particular faith or not? Our doctor, surgeon, do they need to pass some kind of religious litmus test before we let them treat us? In mental health, in my profession, it's getting to the point where many people are asking not only for a qualified therapist, but one of a particular you know, faith. There's a whole organization of Christian therapists. Now, there's nothing wrong with this necessarily. I'm not saying that that in itself is a problem, but it raises the question as to, you know, where would, would it end? How far in how many spheres of do we need to go to find you know, situations where we want to have people that are of our particular religious you know, persuasion? Is it important for our car mechanic? Sounds silly. What about if we're a, a potential spouse? It used to be that interreligious marriages were frowned upon considerably. Where are we going? That's the question. I really hope that if nothing else, we can begin to ask ourselves the question, what does a person's faith mean? Not to them, that it should have some particular meaning to them, but what does a particular per a person's faith mean to us? Does it have to be the same as ours? Does it have to be close? Can we have meaningful relationships and affiliations with people who view spirituality different from ours? That's the question I'm posing today, and I hope you'll be able to give it matter some thought and perhaps give us a, you know, a comment or two on it. So this is John Riolo for our Civil Discourse blog, and I hope this has given you at least something to think about. Thanks again.